Oh, there we go. Did you see that? I just changed it. <laughs> I mean, I'm here with Chris, who was having camera issues, but just switched it. So, I mean, something. This is gonna be a good one. Um, yeah, yeah, it sounds uh, ridiculous if you're tuning in, but this this app automatically mirrors you so that your right side is on your actual right side as if you were like, anyway, so I wasn't looking at my face. It wasn't how I liked my face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be writing a, uh, a letter to the, the CEO of StreamYard. We'll, we'll be, we'll be changing that for you, Chris, just for yeah, you. Well, there was an option. So I clicked it. Oh, all right. Then never mind. I won't be writing that letter to the CEO. I forget that if, if the CEO is watching. <laughs> What's up guys. Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the underdog talk. Something about the underdog. Today, we have one of the minds behind Max Hype Training. But before we get into this interview, I have to give this gentleman a proper underdog talk introduction. Today's guest is a United States Marine Corps veteran, a WNBF pro natural athlete, a full time online coach, and as mentioned earlier, a co founder of the legendary Max Hype Training. And finally, a man who once said, second place is the first loser. <laughs> the one and only Mr. Chris Elkins. What is up, man? How are you doing? Man, that's a that's a dope, that's the best intro that I've ever gotten on a podcast. Thank you, sir. Thank check you. mark off my book. Wow. <laughs> and 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 Chris, speaking of another check mark off my book, guys, I, I don't know if you've if you follow Chris. If you don't, go follow him. But we got to run my guy's codes up. Venmo him, cash app him, because I can't have my guy out here drinking Diet Dr. Thunder. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Hey, man, it tastes the same. It tastes the same. All right, I guess you save money. It tastes the same. Fine. But still, check my guy's Chris out. All hey, right, man, it's out. inflation out here. It's real. I know. Creatine, I was checking it yesterday. I mean, normally it's like $19.99. Now it's like $33. I'm like, damn, there's my paycheck. Yeah. It's crazy. It is. Everything's going up. It is. But Chris, I want to start my online coaching. I have not changed the price in damn near a decade. Here we are. Affordable as always. So you see inflation didn't ever, Chris said, fuck inflation. I love that. I love that. I mean, if you want a affordable coach that has not been hit by inflation, please check out Chris's content. That's but, right. Chris, I want to start from the beginning. You grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I love that area, by the way. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, your childhood was tough, with both your parents being absent in your childhood. Now, I heard a phrase today that I really liked. Um, Flowers can't grow just in the sun. They need rain. And I think you had that hardship. And I think you came out better, I want to assume. And I think also in that rain, you found your grandparents, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so now I do have to ask, how did that tough start shape you into the man you are today? You know, it's hard to say, like, where would I be had things been differently? It's it's really hard to say because, you know, you, you just can't know, right? But I do know that um, I, I'm very grateful for where I am today, for what I've been able to accomplish thus far. Um, but I... But I I don't ever want to sit back and be like, okay, yeah, we did it. We made it. Like, you know, I still feel like I still feel the same way. Like I feel like I, I have a lot more to achieve in life. You know, I always set goals for myself and, it, and surprisingly they're not, they're not monetary. Like I feel like money doesn't, doesn't really bring me a ton of happiness. Like that's not, that's not what really motivates me. Um, it's things that like fulfill me, you know, like obviously I have to make a living. I have a family to support, but um, monetarily is not what fulfills me. And I found that out probably, you know, six, seven years ago when things started to get, things start to go well. I'm like, damn, like, this is great that things are going well, but this is not what fulfills me. So I, I set other goals. Like, you know, I want to win the world championship in natural bodybuilding. That's been my, my number one goal probably since 2019. When I realized I was decent at men's physique, I was like, cause I, I was doing bodybuilding before and, um, you know, obviously winning my weight class at worlds being the world champ of whatever weight class I'm in is a, is a, is a sick goal. But, uh, while I think that I could still achieve that, especially in the bantam weight and the lighter, lighter weight classes, um, I, I think I'm much more suited for men's physique. And, um, I, 
that's just a, it's a goal. It's like, I'm so close. Literally last year I lost by one point and uh, we're going to change things this year. And I think you will. I think give your little, give yourself a little more credit than just decent, Chris. I mean, I saw you even back in that 2019, I think you had a post from 2013 and you've looked bigger than I've ever looked. So hype yourself up a little, man. Cause you, you definitely are the real deal. Now, Chris, I want to jump from your childhood. You enter the Marine Corps right after high school. Right. Yeah. Thank you for uh, that. Like so I never, I never intended to go to the military. Um, Virginia is like a Virginia beach is like a military town. They have a lot of Navy. Um, and it, it's just it's something that never appealed to me at all. So what I had planned to do was just, I was working full time at Best Buy selling computers and I was going to, um, keep doing that. I was going to take some time off and then go to a community college and then transfer to a, a four-year school. And, um, I was like, I need a break. Cause I, I actually went to a gifted, um, program in elementary school I went to a gifted school in middle school and I went to a uh, like a math and science magnet program for uh, high school. And I was just so burnt out from school. And uh, my senior year, I was just so distracted with girls and working and driving and trying to save up money. And like um, I just had no interest in school at that point. So um, the plan was take a year off, start the next year. And I will n definitely not let my kids do that because I think for me, I just like I don't know. It's just like the last thing on my mind. And um, anyway, the Marine Court Marine recruiter hit me up and I was like, man, this sounds like something that really interests me. Like they, they just kept saying the same shit. Like, do you want to be the best? And I was like, I am the best. Like, I do want to be the best. That's it. That's, that's all I want to be is the best. And, uh, and now like from there, that was it. And those dress blues, the suits that they show up in, it's like, man, they were sharp. So I signed up and here we are. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your service, Chris, and, you know, everyone else who's watching that's been in the military, you know, thank you. That's all I can say, obviously. Appreciate it. I, it was an honor. And uh, the amount of experience that I gained um, is just, like, priceless. Yeah. I mean, how long were you in it, Chris? Uh, I had a five-year contract. So I went in uh, to do electronics. And at first, I was going to go to the reserves. And I was like, then I started thinking about it. And I was like, no, man, I still have to work at Best Buy. Like, I love the Best Buy. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's it a great opportunity as well but um i was like no nah, it's like part time i don't want to be a part-time marine like if i'm gonna do it i'm just gonna go all out get as much of, get as much out of it as i can and then see where you know see where life goes from there but um yeah no so after the the my contract ended i, I, I knew i didn't want to re-enlist i mean don't get me wrong like it was an unforgettable experience and like you learn things that you can't learn anywhere else it's like you know, literally, it's a, a unique opportunity. And I went to Iraq in 2006. Um, and that was, again, a very interesting experience as well. Um, but I, I knew that I didn't want to make that my career. I wanted to um, basically have like, the, you know, I, I wanted I wanted to do something on my own, you know, and I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. But I, I knew that I wanted to do something for myself. And in the military, you know, you constantly are being told exactly what to do. Like, yeah, but it's a very strict schedule. Um, it's like a right, most people don't know this, but like once you're on base and you're doing your job, it's like a regular job. You get off at like four 30 or whatever, depending on, um, if you have to work later or whatever, but what, but you don't really like, you always have someone telling you exactly what to do. Uh, wow. I, I, yeah, I definitely never knew that. Um, but <laughs> I feel like I'm reading your book cause we're going to jump now to 2013. You find natural bodybuilding. Yeah. Now. I have to ask the question that everyone wants to know. Why natural bodybuilding? Why pick natural bodybuilding over? Yeah, so honestly, I mean, I was like, I was in the gym, like my whole life, but never super consistent. Like I would, I would work out, I never worked out for more than six months at a time. I just didn't really have any like, lofty goals or any deadlines or anything that really like held me accountable. I remember I would, I, I remember one time um, when I came back from Iraq, when I was in Iraq, I trained for like, I was there for seven months. I probably trained consistently for like three to four months. And I remember seeing like amazing results. And I took creatine for the first time. It was like the Nitro Tech or Cell Tech or whatever okay. um, in 2006. And it had like 80 grams of sugar. It's like a purple thing. Pour it in there and drink it every day. And um, I was like, man, I feel like I can really see some results here. And this is in 2006, right? And I got up to like 153 or four pounds. First time I'd ever been over 150 pounds. Then I got, I got back to the States and I stopped lifting 
And I went right back to like 140 to 145. And I was like, dang, that didn't last very long. <laughs> and then I was like, why did I stop lifting weights? And I was like, oh, because it's a lot of work. And um, yeah, so that that cycle just kept happening. Like I would train for three months and then stop for a year and then train for three months. And I started playing poker semi-professionally and stopped doing everything else. Basically, I was just Marines and poker. And then once I got out of the Marines, um, you know, I, I didn't have anyone forcing me to be fit or active. So I started um, riding road bikes and then I started doing indoor rock climbing. Um, and then I, I broke my hand, um, my finger. This one actually is all messed up. I broke it playing um, catch behind the office that I ran um, in my, uh, my corporate day job. And rock climbing was way harder even after I recovered. I had to have surgery and had some screws put in here. And so I was like, well, I, I like the way I look rock climbing, like physically, like I was getting kind of kind of like shredded and ripped. And I started going and I'm like, what? I can't I can't rock climb as often. So let me start lifting more weights. And then I didn't want to just do anything half assed. So I went on YouTube. I found uh, Kino Body, Greg O'Gallagher, found the Hodge twins. And I found um, Matt Ogus. And it was just like a, you know, like a, one thing led me like a rabbit hole. One thing led me to the other. And then I saw Matt's 2011 Matt versus Mayhem series on YouTube. And this is like classic. And um, it was already a year old. This was like 2012. But I was like watching some of the old videos. And I was like, man, this guy's I'm, I'm in the Bay Area at the time. And he's in Sacramento. And I was like, this guy's not very far from me, like an hour and a half or whatever. And I'm like, if he could do this, why can't I? And I didn't realize like he had already been lifting like several years. And I like have not been lifting consistently ever my whole life. But I started and then about six months later, I hired 3DMJ, the same coaches that he used to prep him, Eric Helms and Jeff Alberts and Alberto Nunez. And um, anyway, so I ended up getting the coach, Jeff Alberts, and he prepped me. And um, anyway, the reason why I chose natural bodybuilding is because I didn't know anything else really. Like, you know, I, I knew that obviously I knew about Arnold Schwarzenegger and I've, I'd heard of Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler, but I didn't I didn't know anything about competing I just knew like, I don't take drugs. You know, my, my mom and dad had drug issues and that's why they didn't raise me. So, um, never, it was never in my mind, like, Oh, I'm going to use drugs. And I wasn't in like that gym culture or anything. So I, I never had seen steroids before, never been around it. And so to me, it was just like, okay, natural bodybuilding is a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. And so when I found out that it was, and that I could compete just like the way I am without having to do anything, uh, too different than what I was already doing, then I was like, wow. I didn't know this was a thing. And then, you know, the rest was history. I fell in love with it. And, and the rest is history because within just a few years of your first event, you win your pro card. So congratulations there. And transition to being a full-time fitness influence, influencer and currently have 330,000 followers. So clearly you were doing something, you know, right. So I have two questions. First, what is your biggest tip for someone who is trying to be a fitness influencer and then B, what is your biggest tip for someone who's just starting their fitness journey? Okay, so yeah, so if you're trying to be a fitness influencer, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, I, I believe a lot of it has to do with luck, like the timing, you know, timing is everything. So, you know, I started on Instagram around 2012. I didn't really plan to become an influencer. I just was posting my own progress. And then, and then same thing with YouTube. I was like vlogging my, my own first contest prep. And it was more so because I didn't know if I was ever going to do this again. I didn't know if I would like it. I didn't know if it would be a thing or if this is like a one and done. So I wanted to be able to look back and have all these memories and kind of be able to relive this. Um, but what ended up happening is a lot of people started watching it. And I remember when I first got to like a thousand followers on Instagram and I was like, hey, we made it. We got a thousand followers. Like, And this is like people I don't know, you know. So to me, it was like it was kind of a trip. And like, believe it or not, I was taking selfies in like 1999, like with a webcam on a computer, you know? So like, this is something I would have done whether there was social media or not social media. I was just doing it, you know? I wasn't doing it for anyone. I was just doing it because I liked it, you know? Maybe I'd send pics to girls or whatever, but it was like, you know, literally like in high school. And so now it's like a really normal thing, obviously. But, but then it was kind of like, I was like just doing this because I because I wanted to keep track of my progress. I'd work out in the garage. I would come in and I would take pictures of myself, like not thinking that it was as weird as now it seems thinking back on it because nobody did that, you know. But but anyway, so if you want to be an influencer, it's it's not going to be easy, but don't give up. Create content that you would want to consume if you didn't know yourself. Like if you 
you, you know, you have to think to yourself, like, what is the content that is going to be eye catching or informative or go viral? And, and that's what you need to do. If you want to grow, you need to go viral, like, or you're not really going to grow or you need to collaborate with other already established influencers. And it's just Instagram specifically is very hard to grow on today, but TikTok is a lot easier. Instagram reels are uh, very easy to, you know, if you, if you make enough content, eventually something will get seen and you just got to keep building on that and not give up and be consistent. I remember I was posting like one to two times a day, every single day um, for years from like say 2015 to 2018 um, before growing was no longer my number one goal, you know? And Chris, I, I mean, I totally agree on, on this. You know, I've talked to so many influencers in just this month and a half that this show has been around and these results and these, you know, the success, it unfortunately doesn't happen overnight. And so many people, not even just in the fitness in, in, in industry, you know, want to rise to fame, want to be that person immediately. Um, but what they don't see is these people who are big like Chris, you know, in the industry, how long it's taken. I mean, my guy Chris was out here taking selfies and shoot probably before I was born. So I think <laughs> it's always key to just, you know, never give up like Chris said. And I think the one thing I want to add, not add because Chris did mention that, is be yourself. You know, you're going to go places by being yourself. Chris is him, himself by taking those selfies, even though, you know, now looking back at it, I don't think it's weird. But, you know, Chris might. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But be yourself. Uh, and I think that's what's going to take you far. So I love that answer, Chris. I think that was so genuine. Uh, and I hope, you know, people who are looking to become a fitness influencer can see that advice and learn from that. Now, Chris, on to the second one. What is your biggest tip? You know, you've been doing this so long. You've seen it all. You are a fitness coach. You know, you own Max Height. What is your biggest tip for someone who's looking to get into this fitness journey? Uh, just start. There's there's no like perfect time to start. So just start and then don't waste time um, doing things that don't work. You know what I mean? Like try to find reputable source of information and follow it. You know, don't second guess yourself all the time. Don't spin your wheels. And then the other thing is um, if you're new, you need to commit to building muscle. Like if that is your goal to build your physique, commit to building muscle. I've spent so many summers being fat and, uh, but you know, it's worth it. It paid off. Like I Look at him now guys, look at him now. <laughs> now I just feel fat. No. I feel fat after my cheat meal. So I, I'm with you on, on some point, but I mean, and I, and I normally, I will say it takes time, but I will also add, you know, max hype training is legit. I've been checking it out. You know, I think you guys should check it out. If you are watching, I saw there's free content too. I saw that there's no inflation. You know, Chris is that guy. So definitely check that out. It takes time, you know, and there is, like Chris mentioned, you can start at any time. Um, and even if you just stop, like, you know, even Chris once did, it's all about getting back into that rhythm yes. uh, and, and that bounce back. So I totally agree. Now, I want to end with what I've been talking about, what I've been preaching, max height training. So how did you come up with the idea and do you have any big plans going forward for, you know, max height training? Well, yeah, you know, that's interesting that, that you mentioned that. But one thing on oh, before I before I go over that is I did want to say I know that I mean, you probably have a lot of younger people on, in your audience. Um, there, there's a lot of people that just want to focus on getting shredded, being shredded. The problem is you're not going to grow if you're shredded all the time. Maybe you'll grow on Instagram or on TikTok. But you're never going to take your physique to the next level if you're constantly trying to stay shredded. Like you need to, I'm not saying to be lazy and to, to um, eat anything and everything, but I'm saying like you need to have a plan to actually put muscle on, like especially if you're between like 18 and 25, you, you know, and if you haven't been in the gym very long, you don't want to be depriving yourself of the calories that you need in order to grow and to get stronger. Um, I just think it's so important because I, I just see, you know, I see people on TikTok and they're like emaciated. Like you're talking, I'm like, they're, they're like dieting so hard that they're staying staged lean year round and not making gains. And, you know, that's cool that you're 10% body fat if that is your goal. But if your goal is actually to progress your physique and eventually get, you know, and, and you say, well, maybe you say like, you don't care about strength. You only care about aesthetics, but you have to get stronger in the gym to, to build muscle, to grow. So I just think a lot of people are doing a disservice to themselves and their, their long-term physiques by uh, 
trying to be shredded for the for Instagram, for social media, for TikTok, whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, do you agree? What do you think, Teddy? I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think, unfortunately, not with just social media, but the current physique that people attribute to being successful is like what you said, that shredded, that, you know, ultra lean body, you know, throughout the year. But I think you made a perfect point that you can't be shreddy year round and still get that muscle where you see yourself down the line. You've got to have, you know, ebbs and flows in that. So I totally agree with what you said. Yeah, I think there's, um, I think there's a lot of pressure on guys that people don't talk about, like mentally, like especially young guys that got to be shredded all the time. Like if you're in this gym culture and you want to be like a, a gym guy, a gym bro or whatever, and it's like, oh, I can't lose my abs or whatever. Like, man, the fact is some people are just not going to have visible abs at 15% body fat. Some people don't even have visible abs at 13% body fat. What, the way you store your body fat is going to have more to do with that than what your body fat is at. Like, you know, it's, it's luck on my part. I could be 18% body fat and you can still see some ab definition, but that's just, that's just me. You know, other, other people might need to be 8% to, to have clearly defined abs. And unfortunately that makes a lot of people stay a lot leaner than they should be if they were trying to actually, you know, make progress in the gym. Um, I just think it's tough, man. Uh, there's a lot of pressure in society and Instagram and cover models and everything, you know? Um, so like, that's why I want to try to show like what's real and you know, what, what, I try to show what I look like even in the off season. And now I really, I really, I respect that because unfortunately, you know, people are pushed so hard with how fitness is and trying to look like what you, you know, and genetics have such a big role. Like, you know, I've been, I might always have big calves, but I'll never have big biceps. Someone else who might have big biceps might not have big calves. So it does play a role into what you can be. And one thing that I've learned from this show, and I'm not, no, I'm not a, you know, personal trainer, health coach, I'm just the host of this show. The one thing I've heard from people like Chris, who are top fitness influencers, is it's not about comparing yourself. It's about comparing yourself to the day before. So being better than what you were the day before, looking at someone else will do nothing, nothing positive to you at the end of the day. Like if I look at one of our previous guests, Noel, you know, I'm going to look like an absolute little like shrimp. So look at, look at you the day before, the week before. One thing that helps me is progress pictures. Um, which yeah. I was like two weeks ago. So my coach, he takes pictures. I'm doing my first bodybuilding show on July 17th. My nice. coach takes pictures each week of me. And I see little improvements each week, which make me feel mentally better. Um, so I, you hit the nail on the head, Chris. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I've, I've been consistent now since 2012 for a, a decade strong. So if you've been in the gym for a year and you don't look like me yet, don't be so hard on yourself. It takes time. Be patient, you know? And um, like I said, I spent a lot of time in those early years in a gaining phase, you know, where my, with, at a higher body fat, a body fat that I didn't exactly like to be at, but I was like sacrificing because I knew I wanted to be a better bodybuilder. That's what I, you know, I enjoy competing in bodybuilding. So I knew that I needed to take some time and invest in um, gaining weight, even if I didn't like the way I looked when I was heavier or whatever, you know? And it, and it all paid off and, it, you know, it takes time and dedication. I'd say you're pretty big right now. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you've you definitely hit the epitome of what a natural bodybuilder should look like. I think you've done so well. I've seen your progress pictures. And, I mean, the work, the work shows for itself at the end of the day, Chris. Yeah. The work shows yeah. for itself. I appreciate that. I feel like there's still a lot of room for improvement. I'll be 38 in August, but I feel like I'm not yet at my prime. Um, you know, injuries are at a minimum. We got some like tendonitis, and I don't know if you heard that crack. Not on wood, not crackle pop. But um, there, there's still a lot of room for improvement, and so I'm I'm not done. You know, by by any means, still got a lot of work to do. And I'm not saying, and I'm not admitting, and I'm not putting down hunger. I think being hungry to be your best is always one of the best things you can do just in life in general. Um, but being hungry with a positive mindset, not yeah, exactly. being hungry with a negative mindset. And that's something I've personally learned how to balance my hunger. So it goes to a positive, you know, attribute, like getting better physically, but not mentally killing myself because I'm not getting every inch. It takes time. So again, yeah, I agree. There's a, there's a fine balance between that. I mean, 
some people do better with some some negative self talk that motivates them. But I I agree. Like you need to um, be proud of yourself as well, and look back and look at your accomplishments and remind yourself, like you know, if you you still have work to do, you still have a goal. But there's nothing wrong with celebrating some victories. And I I totally agree. Now, Chris, going into how to build muscle, max hype training. I looked at it. I loved it. So how did you come up with this, you know, website um, and what plans you have for, you know, max hype training? Yeah. So in 2017, um, I had a business partner at the time, Christopher Barricat. He was um, finishing his, I think maybe he already had his master's in exercise science and nutrition. And um, he wrote a specific training program for me. And we ended up adapting that to uh, with some changes to Max Hype Extreme, put together an ebook for it. And I told him, I said, hey, man, we need to sell this to the people because this is the most legit program I've ever ran. It's like the greatest uh, hypertrophy training program in the universe. So we uh, packaged it, put it out there and uh, created the brand. So Max Hype stands for Maximum Hypertrophy. And uh, so w- once we came out with other programs after that initial one, we, we called the first one Extreme. So it's, it's not for beginners. It's a uh, two days on, one day off, four days on, one day off and repeat. So it's six out of eight days. And um, it has three different weeks. So there's some um, weekly undulating periodization there. And uh, it's, it's a sick program, man. I, I ran it straight for about a year and a half to two years. And then we came out with a five-day version called Max Hype Elite. And then we had a, a beginner's version, Max Hype 101. And it has three different tiers. And um, they're all available on the website. I'm actually adapting everything over to an app. Uh, it's in process right now. So soon you'll be able to get all of these programs in one place, one marketplace on the app. You just you know, you sign up for the app and you'll have access to everything. And then I'm going to be putting tons of content on the app as well. And um, I have a new program coming out. Um, it's going to be called Flawless Physique. And it's an alternating five-day program. And it's going to alternate between two of my favorite splits, where basically the first week is upper lower rest, push pull legs. And the second week is upper lower rest, chest and back, um, another lower day, which is more glute and hammy focused, and then shoulders and arms, rest and repeat. So you have those two different one, um, which is a hybrid strength and hypertrophy, and then the following week, which is a straight hypertrophy. Wow, I, I mean that app's going to be a game changer, especially with how modern day people are. Unfortunately, we can't read a book, we can't do that. I mean, we need everything on an app. So I think that's going to change the game. I mean, I hate to say it myself. I mean, when that app comes out, I'll be getting it because I'm not, I'm not good with you know computers and all the book stuff. But apps, I mean, that's going to be a big game changer. So I'm really. I'm yeah, really, it's got to be an app. It's it's got to be now, guys. I mean, we are talking to the mind behind Max Hype Training, one of the best natural bodybuilders out there. I mean, it's been an honor and privilege. And now, I Chris, I know you are a busy guy, but are you down for some rapid fire questions before I get you out of here? Yeah, of course, I'll do my best. I got this. Uh, this I'm in prep right now, so I got prep brain. Let's see how I can do. Oh, the McGregor asked his first question. Favorite cheat meal? What do you? What did you eat after your most recent competition? Uh, well, that was that, that was in- question. So, what did you? What did you eat after your cheat meal? Or what did you eat after your show? It was it was actually a straight through format. So it was in the morning. So we had like chicken and waffles. But my, my favorite cheat meal is pizza. Okay, you can't go wrong with that. And now, Chris, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but you're sponsored by Essie. Yeah. So I, I, I not at the moment, but. Uh, SC is a great brand. <laughs> Highly recommend. Great brand. Okay. All right. I that's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. Yeah, it's it's complicated. Okay. It, it'll work out. It'll work out. Everything uh, is well. Trust the process. Talk like Rocky for the rest of your life or have to box Rocky in his prime. Hey yo, Adrian, I guess I gotta talk like Rocky for the rest of my life, you know. Hey. Yo, why was that so good? You and Rich Gaspari. You and no, you and Rich Gaspari. I, I don't know, but both of you did it, and it was pretty damn spot on. So well done. I, I, I wow, wow. <laughs> um, Forget next, about it. Favorite pose. Uh, I don't know. I uh, side chest. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I, I, side chest is definitely, I have to say, that's my favorite, too. I mean, that's definitely the best one. I mean, it makes you look the biggest. Um, pull-ups or chin-ups? 
pull-ups. Yes. Thank you. I think that's the only right answer. I think pull-ups work more of the body. They're more effective and they're harder. Not that I can do either of them, but yeah. Uh, I'm sure you can do like 20. I mean, maybe with a resistance band, maybe. <laughs> Final question. No pump powder for a year or no pre-workout for a year? Hmm. I guess I'll go no pre-workout. Really? Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather have a pump product and I could just take like a energy drink for caffeine. Okay. All right. You're the, you, I was going to say you're the first person to ever say that. And then you added the caffeine and the energy drink. So I, yeah, yeah, there's workarounds, you know, Okay, there's workarounds. I mean, Chris, it has been the biggest honor and privilege having you on. I appreciate all your time. Now, Chris, is there anything you want to plug? Where can we find your website? Where can we find your Instagram? All that stuff. Yeah, so obviously Instagram is Chris underscore Elkins. Right now I'm having a Father's Day sale on my coaching and um, all training programs, 15% off. Discount code FATHERFIT. Very simple, FATHERFIT. And um, you can find everything with the link on my IG or you can go directly to cuttingedgephysiques.com. And we'll also have all of Chris's stuff in our link to this video. But Chris, again, thank you so much for your time. Until next time, guys. Underdog out.